Let's take the markdown component we started in the previous video tutorial and add an edit mode and a preview mode. So the first thing we're going to need is a template with a text area in it. Uh, you know, we need somewhere to actually edit the markdown. So if I drop in this template and hit refresh, you'll see nothing is showing up. And that's because if we look at it, you'll see we have our markdown element with nothing inside of it. That means that in this linking function, at this point, this element uh, has already been rendered from this template. So it hits this point and we already have the text area. And when we try and get the content from it, the text from it, it's already empty because there's nothing inside of it and we're basically replacing it with nothing. So while the linking function is great for things like adding uh, watchers to the scope or adding properties to the scope to expose them to your, you know, the HTML, or um, manipulating the actual DOM ele element, accessing the attributes, um, it's really not the place where you can do any sort of template manipulation. So I'm just gonna delete the linking function for now, hit refresh, and you'll see that uh, we now have a text area. So this is great so far, but what we need is this markdown content so that we can edit it. Now, how we're gonna get this is using some, a process called transclusion, which is pretty simple, even though it's a long word that may not make sense. Uh, so we'll use the word transclude, to set it to true, and then grab the content using this attribute. And all this is really doing is kind of yanking this content out of this markdown element, uh, storing it for later when you need it in a template, and then it's gonna drop it in wherever you uh, use this attribute. So if I refresh, You'll see it didn't quite work, but it actually kind of did. Because if you look in this text area, you'll see we have a span that's wrapped our content. And while this is useful for probably 99% of the scenarios you'd use transclusion for, um, for a text area, it's not exactly what we need. So we're gonna have to do a bit of custom template manipulation uh, rather than using this uh, template helper property. And the place that we do that is in a compile function. So I'm gonna delete the template, delete the transclusion process, and just set up our compile function. Now you'll see the, the uh, parameters here are a T element, T attributes, and a transclusion function. We're really gonna worry, just worry about this T element, which is the template element, or T attributes is template attributes. So it's the template before it's actually kind of rendered out and prepared for the linking function. So from our template element, we can grab the content from it, and this is going to be the markdown. So the content at that point is going to be the markdown. And then we can do a custom template uh, manipulation. And so we'll set up our template here. We'll just say, this is a text area, just like before. And then we'll just name this edit template. And then in our T element, we can replace the HTML with our edit template. So if we refresh now, you can see uh, you know, we're back where we started. Um, we still have nothing in it because we haven't put the markdown content in there. And the way that we can do that is by simply using the ng model, bind that to the markdown and then exposing the markdown on the scope. So uh, to do anything on the scope, you'll see that we can't do that in our compile function because the scope isn't ready yet. So we need to do that in our linking function. The way to access the linking function at this point is by returning it from the compile function. Uh, if you try and do it the other way where you um, would say something like um, link function, that's not gonna work at all because it's a function now that's returned from our compile function and it wouldn't be called any other way right now. So we'll return it and we'll just assign a property of scope uh, markdown is equal to the markdown that we yanked out originally. And so we're kind of doing transclusion by hand right now. So if I refresh now, you'll see we have our content. We have our content. So, so far so good. Um, the next step is to hide this, hide the edit mode when I double click on it. Um, so we'll set up a way of hiding and showing it. Uh, we'll just say only show this when is edit mode is true. If I refresh it, is edit mode defaults to false. So let's default it to true instead. So is edit mode um, is true. 
refresh and it shows up. And then we'll set up another, uh, we'll set up our click handler here and just say uh, switch to preview. So whenever I switch the preview mode, I'll say scope, uh, switch to preview, it's a function, and we'll say scope is edit mode equals false. And this should make it hide. So I double click and it goes away. That's because ng show, when this is true, it'll show, when it's false, it'll hide. So now that we have it hiding, we need to set up the other half of our template, which is the preview mode. So we'll just set up a div here. Um, and we'll put this, up, something called preview in it. And we'll say ng show, actually ng hide is edit mode. And this is just the inverse of um, what we have in our edit template, because this is basically gonna say, when is edit mode is true, then hide it. When is edit, when is edit mode is false, then show it. So it's just kind of uh, switching back and forth. So if we refresh again, double click, you'll see nothing has happened. And that's because we haven't added our preview template to our element. So we'll just go ahead and append this. Um, and that'll be our preview template. Hit refresh, double click, and you'll see our preview template shows up. And if we double click on this, we want it to switch back over. Um, so we'll say ng double click, switch to edit. And then we can set up an edit function. Just duplicate this. And we'll call this switch to edit. So switch to edit. And then instead of false, this can be true. So if I refresh and I double click and double click, then double click, you see we're toggling back and forth between our edit mode and preview mode, edit mode and preview mode. So really the last thing to do here is that when we switch to the preview mode, we'll want to render out this content using that uh, showdown converter. So we'll say make HTML uh, scope markdown and that'll be our rendered uh, HTML from the markdown. And then what we need to do is replace the preview template element with our make HTML. Now, the way I prefer to do this, um, you can do it a, a few ways, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the preview template, and I'm gonna render it out as an element first using this uh, angular element method. So I'll pass in the preview template, and from here I can get a reference to our preview element. And then instead of appending the template, I can append the element so that anywhere else in here, I have a reference to the preview element. I can say preview element replace with uh, make HTML. So if I refresh now and I double click, you'll see that it, now it renders out the markdown as proper HTML. And I can um, edit this to say whatever, then double click. And you can see it's updating just as we want. Now you may think that this is great and we're done, but there's actually a couple more things to point out just as uh, general tips. The first thing is if you duplicate this and then I refresh, you'll see, oh look, it's awesome. We have two components running at the same time, but what happens if I start typing um, in one of them, it starts editing it in the other one. And if I double click, it just, you know, everything starts breaking. This is because we're not isolating the scope to just this component. The scope is being shared uh, across the parent scope. So anything I change in here is going to go into the parent scope of you know both of these components and be edited or updated across the components. So what we need to do is create something called an isolate scope here. Um, typically you could you could add properties to that whatnot. But for this scenario, we don't even need properties on it. We just need an isolate scope. And then we can run these individually um, without impacting. I double click this one and say the other and double click. You can see I can switch uh, each of these components individually and they can behave isolated from the other ones using the isolate scope. Now, the last thing to point out is
if someone else creates a component called Markdown and you have your component called Markdown, they may start overriding each other. So it's usually a it's a best practice to just um, to just add your own namespace here. So I'm going to put JL Markdown and just rename this top Markdown to um, JL Markdown. And what that means is if someone else hands me a component called Markdown. I can just have my JL Markdown component work without having to worry about interfering with this one. So you can see that um, this is working fine, and I can double click and switch between the two modes, and it's not worrying about this other Markdown component that someone else may have given me. So it's always a good practice to use a namespace whenever you create your own components. So as a quick review, um, I did quite a bit in this tutorial. We switched over from using a linking function to using a compile function. The reason being we needed to ed custom edit our templates. We did transclusion and then we kind of did transclusion by hand by grabbing out the content of the original template element. Uh, we set up a way to switch between our two modes, preview mode um, and edit mode. And then we also found out how to um, grab an element from our rendered component so that we can update a specific element inside of our component later on. Hopefully this has helped you understand components a bit better and thanks for watching.